Hello, this is Vahid Ahmed and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is second lecture about the general science and ability and general knowledge uh, for CSS and PMS and uh, PCS in various provinces uh, which, is, uh, which are being conducted in various provinces of Pakistan. So we are going to discuss about the basis of life. Yesterday we have discussed the differences between plant and animal cell and what were the similarities between them we have discussed in detail. Now we are going to take each and every organ and discuss it separately. I have divided this lecture into two parts because we are going to discuss in detail the structure and function of each and every organelle present in the cell because it's, a, it's an important part of uh, uh, examination so we have to discuss so that no one is left behind in this uh, in, uh, in this area of bi biological science uh, of general science and ability okay these uh, these are the mentioned organelles which we are going to discuss in detail first of all it is about uh, we are going to discuss about the plasma membrane we know that plasma membrane is the outermost layer membrane of the cell and uh, the cell wall in case of plant cell. Next, we are going to discuss in detail the structure and function of nucleus uh, and further on endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, uh, peroxisome, glycosomes, and then we are going to discuss the skeleton of the cell, which is known as cytoskeleton, which also helps in the formation of centriole and at the end, plastids and minute organelles which are being discovered. Uh, with the passage of time will be also discussed. I have divided this lecture into two parts. In the first part, we are going to discuss about the plasma membrane and cell wall nucleus and endoplasmic membrane. These are the major organs we are going to discuss in detail in this lecture. And in addition to endoplasmic membrane, it is important to discuss the ribosome here. So now I am going to start with my lecture with the plasma membrane. Where we know that the plasma membrane. We know that various models, uh, according to the sci uh, scientific studies, we know that uh, according to the scientific studies, we know that various models have been proposed for the plasma membrane. So the, we are going, to, we are not going to discuss uh, all the models here. We are going to discuss only the fluid mosaic model of uh, plasma membrane. This is uh, this is a diagram of fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane. So we are going to discuss each and every part. We know that uh, uh, we know that. Uh, uh, animal cell which has the outer layer of a plasma membrane. So I am going to discuss this part here in detail. Plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer according to fluid mosaic model. It is fluid mosaic model. It's a fluid mosaic model. Uh, it is uh, made of two phospholipid layer. Uh, the, these are the phospholipids. And in between them are the glycoprolyl, these are the proteins. Um, and uh, here the carbohydrate chain is attached, so it forms a glycoprotein. It's a transmembrane protein and continue. Okay, fluid mosaic, according to fluid mosaic model, uh, plasma membrane is consists of two lipid bilayers. Embedded in them are cholesterol molecules, sterol molecules, embedded in them are proteins. Embedded in them are transmembrane proteins. So, plasma, as we know, uh, the as we know, the function of plasma membrane is to selectively allow certain substances to pass through it. So, this is the major function of uh, cell membrane of every plant and animal cell. It allows certain molecules to pass through them and it does not allow all the molecules to pass through them. So, its structure is uh, in such a way that it allows some of the molecules to pass through it and uh, it does not allow certain molecules to pass through it. Mostly medium intersized or small molecules are passed through it. And it has a structure uh, which shows that the uh, inner part of the plasma membrane is hydrophobic in nature. Inner, inner part of the plasma membrane is hydrophobic in nature. Why it is hydrophobic in nature? What does hydrophobic mean? These are lipid layers, these are phospholipid molecules, these are phosphate group. So lipid and phosphate. This is phosphate, this is lipid. So it forms phospholipid and phospholipid uh, lipid is a part of membrane that does not allow 
water to pass through it. So lipid is one of the part which does not allow the water to pass through it. So it's a hydrophobic region. Hydro means water and phobic means phobic means some type of phobia you are hating. So inner part of the cell membrane is hydrophobic in nature while outer part of the cell membrane is hydrophilic in nature. As we can see around the cell, cell is surrounded by water molecules. So it, ha it has to inter interact that uh, aqueous medium. So outer part of the plasma membrane, whether it's external of the cell, whether it's external of the cell, which is extracellular matrix, whether it's internal of the cell, which is cytoplasm. This is cytoplasm, this is extracellular, uh, extracellular matrix. It has to interact with uh, aqueous, uh, aqueous region. So the outer pa part of plasma membrane is basically uh, hydrophilic, water loving, so, uh, so that membrane could sustain a structure in the aqueous medium, while inner part of the plasma membrane is hydrophobic. So now moving further on, there are certain carrier proteins, certain transmembrane proteins in the plasma membrane will perform a variety of function. Well, like carrier proteins, like aquaporins, uh, like uh, these are uh, involved in the functions such as facilitated diffusion, which is the type of diffusion which, uh, in which uh, carrier proteins help to carry the molecules from one uh, part of the cell, uh, from the inner part of the cell to the outer part of the cell or outer part of the cell to the inner part of the cell. Suppose it's a plasma membrane that carrier protein lies here. It allows, it allow, it carries certain molecules from this region to go to the, this region. These proteins carry without the use of energy. We know that uh, cell membrane uh, is a continuously surviving aqueous environment. So there are certain uh, phenomena acting there where, where uh, different phenomena like diffusion osmosis are occurring continuously by which molecules are passing into and out of the cell. So this is the fluid mosaic model and transmembrane protein. This is a protein where carbohydrate and carbohydrate intact. When I am going to tell you that, okay, first of all, I have discussed about the phospholipid molecules of a plasma membrane. Now I am going to discuss, now I am going to discuss uh, the second part, which is about the carrier proteins. So this carrier proteins uh, help in facilitate diffusion, but when pro protein is attached to the carbohydrate tail, it forms car, it forms glycoprotein. Glyco is a word that is derived from carbohydrate. So it's formed glycoprotein. Glycoprotein uh, performs a function of cell recognition when any foreign particle invade our body. So this glycoprotein helps in the identification of that foreign particle. So its uh, role is identification of uh, foreign molecules. So it, it does not allow them to enter to the cell. That's why it is its function is fully fall in, uh, under the criteria selectively certain uh, selectively allow certain substances to pass through it. So, uh, as a transmembrane protein that actually act as a receptors. Uh, in the later part, I am going to uh, in certain further videos which I am going to make. Uh, I am going to discuss in detail what is the role of transmembrane proteins which are present in the cell. It actually plays a, a role of receptor and where some signal signal molecule bind to it and, uh, uh, and cellular physiology is carried out, which is known as actually signal transduction pathway to regulate the function of cell. So this is the structure. So first of all, phospholipid, bilayer, hydrophobic region, hydrophilic region. Uh, these are the carrier proteins. These are the transmembrane proteins attached to the proteins are certain uh, 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 carbohydrate complex which form the glycoprotein and uh, uh, embedded uh, within the phospholipid bilayer cholesterol molecule. Cholesterol gives less flexibility to the plasma membrane. Now moving towards the second, uh, now moving towards the second only which is the nucleus and nucleus as we know that uh, as uh, I am drawing the animal cell, this is the nucleus, as we know that nucleus uh, is called CPU of the cell. CPU of the cell or basically a brain of the cell which control all the activities of life. So now we are going to discuss in detail uh, uh, this uh, nucleus. 
Nucleus is a, actually the brain of cell which performs all the vital activities uh, of the cell and controls the activities of the cell. So here is the detailed structure of uh, a nucleus. Okay, here is the detailed structure of nucleus. Um, though my, my diagram might not be so well drawn, but it's a circular in shape and it contains a heavy dense part which is also known as nucleolus. And we know that nucleus is uh, uh, the part of cell which contains the genetic material of the cell. We already know that genetic material is basically DNA. DNA is also called deoxyribonucleic acid. In full form, it is also called deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA uh, about DNA, we are going to discuss in the second section of biological science, which is about the biomolecules. Here we are just mentioning that DNA is present inside the cell, and DNA may be in a in a form of chromosome. DNA might be in form of chromosome. Or chromatin, depending on the state, depending on the state whether it is condensed or decondensed. When it is condensed, it is referred as heavily condensed. It is referred as chromosome because it is uh, apparently visible. The structure of chromosome is as follow. While chromatin is loosely condensed or uh, loosely condensed genetic material. So, genetic material, DNA, chromosome, chromatin, all are used for the term of uh, all can be used for the term as uh, genetic material, but depending on the state. Okay, nucleus, nu uh, nucleus, uh, outer membrane is known as nuclear envelope. Okay, uh, nucleus outer membrane is known as nuclear envelope, and the second part, a uh, second part. Uh, between them is a nuclear pore. Okay, this is nucleolus. Okay, okay, and rest is genetic material as I have described before. Okay, nucleolus uh, is the factory for synthesis of RNA. RNA. Uh, there may uh, there are um, many types of RNA. Here, a ribosomal RNA is involved in the formation of particle or subcellular structure known as ribosome. Okay, so I have drawn uh, clearly that and uh, nuclear envelope that protects the uh, that gives the covering or uh, protection to the chromosome. Nuclear pore allows some substances to pass through it or not. But uh, it uh, mostly allows the RNA to pass through it or some information coming that uh, might initiate uh, process of transcription and translation can be signaled through this pore. Okay, actually this is mesh-like structure. Both are mesh-like structures. Okay, uh, this is a structure of nucleus and uh, nucleus control all the activities of cell. Uh, cell. Okay, now moving on, as you know that uh, ribosomal RNA is formed here and then um, which result in formation of ribosome. Ribosome basically relies in the cytoplasm of the cell. So from uh, here ribosomal RNA uh, are synthesized which come out of the nuclear pore to the nucleus uh, to the cytoplasm where they are present and uh, involved in the process of uh, protein synthesis uh, uh, for protein synthesis which is necessary for the activity of life of cell. So this is the uh, one of the function. Uh, this is the detailed anatomy of nucleus. Now moving on to the next organ, which is basically attached to the nucleus from it is endoplasmic reticulum. Yesterday I have told you two, two types of endoplasmic reticulum are present. One is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and the other is rough endoplasmic reticulum. 
when it becomes rough when ribosomes are attached to it okay and um, the thing i want to mention is that uh, these are she sheets which are, which emerge from the nucleus of the cell and it uh, plays a uh, uh, endoplasmic reticulum plays a part in the process of protein synthesis and lipid synthesis a uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum which does not have any attached ribosome to it uh, attached ribo uh, which does not have any attached ribosome to it is involved in lipid and steroid synthesis while where ribosomes are attached that part is involved in protein synthesis so this is the another organelle and the internal part of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum is known as uh, which is the space between them is known as cis terni okay there uh, let me assemble this there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum number one smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is involved in the lipid synthesis the second uh, type of uh, uh, endoplasmic reticulum which is involved in protein synthesis that is rough endoplasmic reticulum to which a ribosome is attached ribosome is a sub particle which is involved uh, which is involved in the process of uh, which is involved in the process of uh, uh, protein synthesis so this is all about the three organelles in detail uh, these are sheet like structures so in the next part we are going to continue from here uh, from this when the nucleus gives the instructions for the process of synthesis uh, for protein synthesis endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes from where the proteins are destinating to different uh, parts of the cell will be continued uh, in the next section thank you